Thank you. So we were actually um, a bit worse than that. We were 150th, uh, you okay. know, globally when we when we started actively um, reforming along the doing business uh, World Bank report. I mean, uh, I think the government of Rwanda very clearly set out in its vision 2020 the agenda to have the private sector at the center of, 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 our, of our development agenda. And so naturally, one of the things that we looked at first was how do we make it easy for businesses to operate? And so we came from 150th uh, globally and looked at the World Bank and said, this offers an excellent tool for us to have an indication of what is our business environment like, what are our SMEs encountering when they are going out there trying to set up business and to run their businesses from you know, looking at the entire life, the life cycle of a business from start to operation to growth. And so because of you know, the very strong and visionary leadership that we had in Rwanda, the president really has been the ultimate champion of these business reforms. And that translated into a very strong and shared vision across all the arms of government, from you know, the executive to the legislature and judiciary, because the reforms required um, a very cross um, you know, sectoral, multi-stakeholder approach. And so what we did, what has you know, made us move from 150th to 29th globally, as you said, and be recognized by the World Bank as the leading reformer of all time, is looking at reforms across three dimensions. The first was regulatory reforms. We had sweeping um, changes to our regulatory framework for commercial entities. Over 20 business laws changed. Institutional reforms, we had very dedicated institutions such as the RDB uh, and the one-stop uh, shop uh, centers that were set up to facilitate investors and businesses. And then automation. Mm -hmm. Technology played a very central role in us coming up with systems um, that facilitated uh, businesses using online services, for instance. Right, so what are some of the things that contribute to this ranking? Because it's not just, I think, uh, what we think of when we think the ease of doing business, you know, you can go register within one day, you can be finished within one week, you're, you're running your business. It's more than that, right? So what are some of the other things that contribute to the ranking? Yeah, I think that's a great question. Um, as I said, what, what the World Bank measures <laughs> is really looking at, you know, what are the different types of experiences that a business, and particularly an SME, encounters throughout its life cycle, right? So starting a business is one part, and a very important part, because you realize that before we had the reforms, the idea of having a business was something that was very foreign because of just how expensive, how difficult it was. Once you demystify that, we came from a place where you had, you know, just 2,000 companies registering annually to over 13,000, you know, so you demystify by simplifying things. Right, once you start your business, you're obviously going to encounter things like, you know, construction. I need to set up a place for operations. Um, I need to get connected to utilities, getting electricity, getting right. water. Um, I might have a legal dispute. What is the court system like for, for commercial, um, you know, entities? As a shareholder, what are my rights as a minority shareholder, you know, in, in, a, in a business? And if I do get to the point where I have financial difficulty and I need to close my business, what is the mechanism for resolving um, insolvency? And so, you know, you look at all these different, uh, you know, uh, points along the life cycle of a business and make sure that at every point you have uh, procedures that are simple. Um, we have done a lot of work, for instance, in improving the electricity supply, making sure that we're reducing how many outages, uh, you know, we have in electricity and the frequency of those outages making sure that we're giving people connection to electricity for free that you know fit within certain categories mm -hmm. making court procedures much simpler much cheaper you know and so on and so forth so really across the board like you were across saying the before spectrum, yes, yes. Um, you know we're seeing deals happening very often actually now you know uh, most recently we've seen Djibouti coming to sign an MOU with a run-in company to uh, develop their land here but we see things like this all the time. Um, recently, we also spoke with the Radisson Group CEO. He was singing praises about doing business in the country. How do you um, entice more investors to come into the country and do business? Because it's one thing to have these things set up, but it's another thing to get people to come and actually use these things. And I think, you know, the, 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 the starting point is always, like you said, how do we attract people? How do we get them in? And um, one of the things that we've seen, you know, beyond, beyond reasonable doubt is the investment environment, the business environment is extremely keen for investors who are looking to where to move their capital. And that's really one of the things that set, sets Rwanda apart. In most of our conversations with investors, the, 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 the typical response we'll get is, you know, we weren't really considering Rwanda as, a, as our topic. It's a smaller economy, smaller market, but it's efficient, it's transparent. If, if, the, if, uh, if the government of Rwanda says something is going to be done, they will follow through. 
the procedures for things to get done are very efficient, very transparent, things get done. And that has really been our defining space, I think, uh, when we, you know, when we go out to attract investors. And we make sure that indeed when you are, um, you know, in the country, we make these things as seamless as, 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 as possible. And uh, in a recent investor perception survey that we ran for existing investors as to why they chose to invest here and why they stay here, um, efficiency of processes, transparency, rule of law, um, governance, you know, having institutions that work that deliver on, uh, you know, the promises that they set out, um, you know, ranked as the top reasons why you would invest in Rwanda as opposed to perhaps a bigger, you know, market like Nigeria right. um, uh, or, or so on, yeah. Right. Uh, just before I let you go, I just want to know what future plans do we have? Because, of course, you're not stopping here. I guess the goal is to be number one, right? So what other things uh, do you have planned to set up and, um, and install before we get there? Yeah, absolutely. We're in an extremely competitive space. Um, you know, right now, uh, being in the top top 30, you're, you're competing with the world's best. And, and I think it's great that Rwanda has really demystified this idea that a smaller economy, you know, a, a third world economy can actually, you know, rub shoulders with the world's best. And so it's a great place to be, but it's extremely competitive, as you said. And for us, what we're really looking at is to continue to drive forward um, some of these reforms. It's very important not to lose any of the gains. Um, the efficiencies that we've put in place require consistency. You need to keep delivering. But we also do have some exciting um, you know, reforms that are still in the pipeline. For instance, moving to a point where we have electronic titling, so land uh, registration. We do have an electronic uh, land register at the moment, but we want to move to a point where all, all, all transactions you know, concerning land transfers, land registrations are done completely online. We're also looking at moving to electric auctioning so, you know, uh, one of the things that typically happens either as a business uh, that's in financial difficulty or in the enforcement of court judgments, you always do go to a point where you're auctioning uh, property that belongs to businesses or individuals. Mm. To increase transparency and efficiency in that process, we're also looking at putting in place an electronic auctioning system, almost similar to what you'd have with eBay, right. um, for, for instance. So still leveraging a lot on the, you know, the, on the, on the, bene the benefits that technology has to leapfrog and, and, and to provide uh, efficiency. I think that's going to continue to be um, one of our key focus areas. Right. Some interesting innovations that we were going to be seeing coming up then there. Thank you so much for joining us on the show today, Louise. We, we really enjoy having you here. Thank you.